there's no question that Asia is going to be the center of gravity for the world's economy going forward. The question is how much of that is really driven by China and how much of that is Asia as a whole. Decades of breakneck economic growth have turned China into a geopolitical powerhouse and eroded America's dominant influence throughout East Asia. Faced with this tilting balance of power, leaders in Washington and Beijing appear to abandon efforts at cooperation and opt more for confrontation. Containment of China just is impossible because unlike Soviet Union, China is integrated in the global economy, but China is not a very mature strategic player. China's tone deaf in terms of diplomacy. This is a country that talks about friendship in a country like the Philippines when China claims some parts of our waters. This is a country that tells Taiwan that one China, two systems work just when Hong Kong is essentially on fire, right? Some will say there is no Cold War because no country in Asia will align itself with China. That China doesn't have and cannot do that soft power that the United States does so well. I don't think money buys allies and China doesn't inspire the Asian world, even if the Asian world would take Chinese money. I want to say one thing is that now the world's relationship is changing very much. And I believe that in 30 years, in the next 30 years, the world will come back to the world of GDP in the world of the world. They can't stop it. If the United States didn't leave it, then it will be gone. Sẽ, sẽ mất hết cái ngôi ngôi vị hiện tại bởi vì là cái cái di chuyển sức mạnh kinh tế sang châu Á nó đang diễn ra rất nhanh và không thể tránh khỏi. As the US and China collide, smaller nations find themselves forced to straddle growing regional fault lines. What's at stake in the US-China contest for influence in East Asia? We traveled to the Philippines and Vietnam to find out. The Philippines pivoted to China as early as October 2016 that led to a Chinese influx of both private and public money. The Philippines, a longtime U.S. ally, is increasingly turning toward China under the lure of foreign investment and steered by the populist anti-Western president Rodrigo Duterte. President Duterte looked at Chinese money as good for the Philippines, and at the beginning it actually was because American investments did not go away, and Chinese investors came in. And this was supposed to be the foundation of the government's flagship build, build, build program, right? Three and a half years later, build, build, build still needs to get built. Show me a single major Chinese infrastructure project in the implementation phase. It's one thing to bring online casinos and sweatshops and questionable businesses. It's another thing for multinational companies to create a robust middle class in Philippines, Malaysia, and other countries. This whole decline of America narrative has to be really deconstructed. If you look at the overall net stock of investments of America here in the ASEAN region, it's far larger than that of China. And American multinational companies provide among the best quality jobs here in ways that none of the Chinese companies are doing. And yet the Chinese make all this huge announcement of billions of dollars of investment here in the Philippines. So the first problem for America is that America, ironically, is not a good capitalist. It's not a good salesman. It doesn't actually promote what it has already achieved in this part of the world. Unlike the Philippines, Vietnam has no long-standing alliance with the United States. The country endured a long and brutal war at the hands of the U.S. But faced with Chinese encroachment into its territory, Vietnam now drifts into America's orbit. I want to quote a French journalist from Le Monde who'd been here since 1965. He said it took 2,000 years of Vietnamese fighting the Chinese. You've come to an end, you've lost it. I may or may not agree, because there's strong sentiments. But in a sense, the average person that I talk to, the business person, the intellectual, everybody's given up. The Communist Party of Vietnam is ideologically aligned with the Chinese Communist Party and leaders in Beijing. But at the same time, the greatest threat to Vietnamese sovereignty is China. Vietnam is increasingly coming into conflict with China over disputed waters in the South China Sea. 
to counter China, Vietnam is hosting American warships in its ports and purchasing American military equipment. If there is a sort of onset of a new Cold War, uh, this time between the United States and China, Vietnam is going to occupy a very important position because it's the only ASEAN nation that can stand up to Beijing. At the same time, it's clear that Vietnam cannot wage war against China. It would lose. And that's the tightrope that Vietnam has to walk. Uh, China is going to be the world's largest economy at some point, likely in the next 10 years. They are the technological superpower in Asia, and that means growth of international architecture around Beijing. Now, one big question will be, are the Americans playing an active role in either engaging or counterbalancing with that, or are they not? We could do things, we could cut off the whole relationship. Now, if you did, what would happen? You'd say 500 billion dollars. Thế tôi nghĩ rằng là cái xung đột giữa Mỹ với Trung Quốc chắc chắn là nó không đơn thuần chỉ là kinh tế, không chỉ là thương mại, mà đây là cái cuộc đấu giữa hai cái cường quốc. I think the greatest enemy here is what you can call strategic fatalism. This idea that China is so influential and its dominance in this part of the world is so inevitable that let's just give up, right? Or worse, let's panic and sue for war. China is a rational actor. With sufficient amount of resistance, China will be willing to recalibrate. Well, there's no trust between the United States and China. There has been an enormous amount of codependence and of interdependence. Whether you're talking about Chinese ownership of a lot of U.S. debt, it's a trade relationship, but I see that interdependence eroding. A lot of American supply chain is going to leave China, and Chinese corporations are a lot more powerful now than they were before. Now, all of that implies that the level of mutuality of the U.S.-China relationship is tilting towards more zero-sumness. It makes a cold war between the two countries more likely and more dangerous. The big question is whether the 21st century will be marked by conflict or cooperation between the two most powerful and prosperous countries on the planet. America's political leaders should be careful. At a moment when the country appears to lack clear foreign policy goals, let alone a grand strategy for pursuing them, politicians risk talking themselves into a new Cold War with the potential for massive casualties. Global recessions, pandemics, and climate change will become harder to address if the United States and China think of themselves as trapped in a zero-sum competition. There's no question that American and Chinese interests in Asia diverge, but until these two countries can find ways to accommodate one another, Asian countries including the Philippines and Vietnam will be forced to pick sides in a contest which nobody wins.